Hare Krishna. Read a few verses from Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. <clears throat> it's chapter 2. And great conversation between Krishna and Arjuna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So, Arjuna is experiencing being caught in material bodily identification with family members, and he's become confused about what to do in this situation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Okay, so <clears throat> the nature of the soul, how to um, rise above three modes of material nature, realize the self. There's a lot in the Gita. So in this little section, the last few verses, um, Krishna was dealing with, um, they all more or less focused on the same thing. Uh, what the purpose of the Vedas is. That the purpose of the Vedas is to realize Krishna. But people get caught up and they pick and choose what they want in the Vedas for sense gratification. So now he's going on to another another aspect of going on to another little section here. And this is um, text fifty one. Karma Jam Budi Yuktahi Palam Chakba Manishina. Janma bandha vinir mukta padam gachan yanan mayan. And this is the Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Jai. So the translation the wise engaged in Krishna talking to Arjuna, the wise engaged in devotional service. To, oh, we read that. Okay, so. Now we go on to the other section. Okay. That was about renouncing the fruits of work. Now we go on. Yada, this is text 52. Yada te moha kali lam budhirviya titar shrishiti tada gantasi nirvedam shrotavyasya shrutasicha. When your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion. You shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. Prabhupada's purport. There are many good examples in the lives of the great devotees of the Lord, of those who became indifferent to the rituals of the Vedas simply by devotional service to the Lord. 
When a person factually understands Krishna and his relationship with Krishna, he naturally becomes completely indifferent to the rituals of fruitive activities, even though an experienced Brahman. Sri Madhavendra Puri, a great devotee and acharya in the line of devotees, says, oh, this wonderful verse. Now, Madhavendra Puri, a great devotee and acharya in the line of the devotees, he was the first one to appear in preparation for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he is the spiritual master of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's spiritual master. And his mood, he was the first to introduce this mood of love and separation and the mood, and conjugal mood of love and separation in preparation for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this prayer is so beautiful. It's a big long Sanskrit, and I'm not familiar with the Sanskrit, but the um, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But the um, <clears throat> English translation, <clears throat> O oh my Lord, in my prayers three times a day, all glories to you. Bathing, I offer my obeisances unto you. O oh demigods, O oh forefathers, please excuse me for my inability to offer you my respects. Now, wherever I sit, I can remember the great descendant of the Yadu dynasty, Krishna, the enemy of Kamsa, and thereby I can free myself from all sinful bondage. I think that is sufficient for me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Setting the stage for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Vedic rites and rituals, Prabhupada continues, are imperative for neophytes. Comprehending all kinds of prayer three times a day, taking a bath early in the morning, offering respects to forefathers, etc. But when one is fully in Krishna consciousness and is engaged in his transcendental loving service, one becomes indifferent to all these regulative principles because he has already attained perfection. If one can reach the platform of understanding by service to the Supreme Lord Krishna, he has no longer to execute different types of penances, sacrifices, as recommended in revealed scriptures. Similarly, if one has not understood that the purpose of the Vedas is to reach Krishna and simply engages in rituals, etc., then he's uselessly wasting time in such engagements. Persons in Krishna consciousness transcend the limit of Shabda Brahma or the range of the Vedas and Upanishads. So this is the great gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Text 33. Yeah, the Lord has made it simple simply by chanting the holy names received in line of succession from the, the pure chanting of the pure devotee receiving the mantra, then uh, all the purposes of the Vedas are known. There's no need for so many rituals and sacrifices and austerities. This is the special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, I put all my potencies in my holy name alone. And so this Madhavendra Puri, he set the stage for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I read his prayer again. It's a wonderful prayer. He says, he was 
the first to appear, just before Mahaprabhu appeared, it says, O my Lord, in my prayers three times a day, O glories to you, bathing, I offer my obeisances unto you. O demigods, O forefathers, please excuse me for my inability to offer you my respects. Now, wherever I sit, I can remember the great descendant of the Yadu dynasty, Krishna, the enemy of Kamsa, and thereby I can free myself from all sinful bondage. I think this is sufficient for me. And then to reiterate Prabhupada, and the purport says, <clears throat> if one has not understood that the purpose of the Vedas is to reach Krishna, simply engages in rituals, etc., then he's uselessly wasting time in such engagements. But he does say that Vedic rites and rituals are necessary for neophytes. But when one is fully in Krishna consciousness, engaged in transcendental loving service, one becomes indifferent to all these rules and regulations. So there's different types of devotional service. One type is actually doing things and offering the results to Krishna. Uh, instead of trying to enjoy the results of the work themselves. Uh, within the Varnashram, different qualities of work. Another aspect of devotional service, two, Prabhupada discusses is two, it's two types of devotional service. There's one on that getting free from the material attachment plane, and then there's the nine processes of devotional service, which are completely transcendental, hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping, offering prayers, making friends with, carrying out the orders, serving the lotus feet, and giving everything to Krishna that one has, offering everything in service to Krishna. So that's devotional service. Hearing and chanting is devotional service. But like anything else, like in the Gita when Krishna says, offer me with love and devotion, a fruit, a flower, a leaf and water, all etc. So similarly, love and devotion is, is the ingredient that makes it devotional service. <laughs> so it said, a person practicing, they don't have so much love and devotion. They're practicing under the guidance of a spiritual master who does have love and devotion. So whatever it is they're trying to do, the spiritual master accepts it on their behalf and offers it to Krishna. So not exactly offering. You don't have love and devotion for Krishna. Your fruit, flower, leaf, and water is not saturated with love and devotion. But if there's love and devotion and attachment for the spiritual master, and offer to the spiritual master first, the spiritual master does have love and devotion for Krishna. They complete the offering. So it's really important to have a spiritual master. <laughs> A qualified, bona fide, authoritative spiritual master who can do that. Take your offering and give it to Krishna until the disciple develops actual love and devotion for Krishna. But even then, you don't like, well, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> that never happens. The relationship with the spiritual master is eternal. But it probably gave this little story about how Prabhupada tried to illustrate that. He was walking with, I think it was Brahmananda, really big-bodied, strong, 
he was huge. He was really, his body was very big and strong. And he was helping Prabhupada, I think they were going down a hill, an incline, to make sure, you know, Prabhupada's his old body, frail, he doesn't want him to trip or fall or anything. So he's helping him down the hill. And Prabhupada's bracing himself on his strong disciple. When he gets to the bottom of the hill, and Prabhupada pushes Brahman under the way. I don't need you anymore. He was trying to illustrate how the relationship with the spiritual master is eternal. It's not like you get where you, you wanted to go and then you don't need him anymore. See, that's the, the Mayavadis. He says, Mayavadi actually worships deities of Radha and Krishna. They will worship different deities until they get what they want, and then they don't need the deity anymore. So that's the impersonalness. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So, one more verse, text 53. Shruti viprati panate yadastas yati nishchala samad bhav achala buddhis tada yogam avapsisi. When your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas, and when it remains fixed in the trance of self realization, then you will have attained the divine consciousness. The flowery language. See, I'm not so familiar with this, but I know Prabhupada has discussed it, that the impersonalists, they're very good at, at making the words very flowery and, and juggling everything around. It's amazing, it's confusing. It's like Trinavarta, the whirlwind, confusing everything to reach a conclusion other than surrender to Krishna. So Prabhupada says, when your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas, Prabhupada's comment, Prabhupada says, to say that one is in samadhi is to say that one has fully realized Krishna consciousness. That is, one is in full samadhi, has realized Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. The highest perfection of self-realization is to understand that one is eternally the servitor of Krishna and that one's only business is to discharge one's duties in Krishna consciousness. A Krishna conscious person or unflinching devotee of the Lord should not be disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas, nor be engaged in fruitive activities for promotion to the heavenly planets. In Krishna consciousness, one comes directly into communion with Krishna, and thus all directions from Krishna may be understood in that transcendental state. One is sure to achieve results by such activities and attain conclusive knowledge. One has only to carry out the orders of Krishna or his representative, the spiritual master. Jaya Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. First and foremost instruction of the spiritual master is 16 offenseless rounds every day, at least 16 offenseless rounds every day, and follow four regulative principles. Baba says your success is guaranteed. If you'll do that, your success is guaranteed. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare.